Welcome back to buffers and titration. In part four of this unit, we're gonna be looking at titrations finally, and strong acid, strong base, or strong base, strong acid titration specifically. Let's go. First of all, the titration of a strong acid with a strong base, the word titration just means mixing a strong acid and a strong base to its equivalence point. So titration is the neutralization It's the lab process of the neutralization of an acid and a base. And in this case, a strong acid, strong base, but it could be a weak acid, strong base, or a weak acid, weak base, or any combination of any of that. So titration is really just the lab procedure that is neutralization. So let's do HCl and NaOH. I'm going to put 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl in a container. Usually that container is going to be an Erlenmeyer flask. And so there'll be some HCl in that container. And then I'll have a burette, a really long, tall, thin tube that's going to have NaOH in it. And I'm going to drop the NaOH into the HCl until it is neutralized until I've added the same number of moles of base as I originally had acid in my flask. So that's why my reaction has HCl plus water, not HCl plus NaOH, because the HCl is what's in my flasks to start with. So how many milliliters of NaOH will be required to reach the equivalence point? This should look pretty familiar. This is just what we were doing in the neutralization problems. That's MAVA equals MBVB. So this is the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid is equal to the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. These are monobasic and monoprotic, so the times the moles of H plus and OH minus doesn't really apply here. And so then it looks like X is equal to 50 milliliters. So when I've added 50 milliliters of base, I should have the same number of moles of base added as I originally had acid to start with. So how many moles of acid were there to start with? Well, I had 0 0.1 molar acid, and I had 50 milliliters. This time I do have to change it to liters because molarity is moles per liter, and there's not another milliliter for it to cancel with. So I end up with x is equal to... 0 0.005 moles. That's how many moles of HCl are present initially. And so then that's also how many moles of H, sorry, NaOH that I'm going to end up adding. What about the initial pH of HCl? Well, pH is just the negative log of the concentration, not the moles, the concentration. That's 0.1. So the original pH before I put any NaOH in my flask is 1. There's only HCl in the flask, so the HCl is the only thing that contributes to the pH. So let's add 10 milliliters of the 0.1 molar NaOH to that solution. Initially, we had 0 0.005 moles of H+. And now, 0 0.01 times 0 0.10 is equal to 0 0.001 moles of OH minus. We are, were added to the solution. I'll make that prettier. So once we've finished with that, the OH- minus is going to react with the H+, plus, but only as much as there is, so we'll subtract, and what we'll be left with is 0 0.004 moles H+. Plus. We're looking for the pH of this 0 0.004 moles, so for the pH we need the concentration. That means we're going to have to divide by the total volume. That is the 10 milliliters of NaOH that we just had. 
milliliters, plus the 50 milliliters of the HCl that we started with. So that's a total of 60 milliliters. Divided by 0 0.06 liters. That's a concentration of 0.6, oh, try that again, 0.067 molar. So the pH is the negative log of that H plus concentration. And so that's going to be 1.18. Our pH started at 1, and now since we're adding base, the pH is going up, we got 1.18. What's happening in this reaction? Well, the OH- minus reacts with the H3O+, plus, or the H+, plus, to make water. But... there is still excess H plus in your solution that didn't all get reacted away, so the pH is based on that excess H plus. So what if you add 20 milliliters of the 0.1 molar NaOH? That's 0.02 times 0 0.1, 0 0.002 moles of OH minus. Remember that initially we had 0 0.005 moles of H plus, and then we added 0 0.002 moles of OH minus, so those will react as much as they can, and we'll end up with 0 0.003 moles of H plus left over in excess. We need the molarity, not the moles, so this is the 20 milliliters that we just added plus the original 50 is a total of 70. So divided by 0.07 liters, we end up with a molarity of 0.043. So the pH is the negative log of that, which is 1.37. Now this is 20 milliliters of NaOH added total, not 20 plus the 10 we already had. 20 added total. So what's happening in this reaction? Again, just like before, the OH minus will react with the H plus to make water, but there's still excess H plus left over, which will determine the pH. So now let's find the pH at the equivalence point. That means once we have the same number of moles of acid as we had base. So remember initially, there were 0 0.005 moles of H+. Plus. So now we've added the equivalence point, the equivalent number of moles of OH-. Minus. So when you subtract those, you're left with nothing. No moles of H+, plus, no moles of OH-. Minus. Instead, just plain water. So the pH of just plain water is just plain 7. Because we have equal amounts of H plus and OH minus, all we have is water, and the pH is 7. What's happening in this reaction? All of the OH minus reacts with all of the H plus to make the solution pure salt, because remember it was NaOH and HCl, and water. Both with a pH of 7. So let's look at the pH after the addition of 60 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH. That's a total of 60, not 60 plus what we already had. So 0 0.06 times 0.1 is 0 0.006 moles of OH minus added. So initially we had 0 0.005 moles of H plus, 
And now we've added 0 0.006 moles of OH minus. So when I subtract that, I get 0 0.001 moles of excess OH minus, not excess H plus. So it's the same kind of math, it's just what's left over in excess is a different substance. Again, we're going to have to divide by total volume. We had the 50 milliliters of the acid plus the 60 milliliters of the base is 110 milliliters total. So divide it by 0 0.110 liters. And that is 0 0.0091 molar. When I take the negative log of that number, 9.1 times 10 to the negative 3, that's going to give me 2.04. But also notice that this is moles of excess OH minus. So this is the pOH, not the pH. The pH is 14 minus that number. 14 minus 2.04 is 11.96 and that's my pH after the addition of all that base. So what's happening in this react in this reaction? All the H plus reacts with the OH minus but there's still OH minus Let's make that prettier. Left over. So the OH minus is the thing that contributes to the pH or the pOH, not the H plus, because the OH minus was in excess. Last thing we're going to do is graph it. This graph is going to have pH on this axis and volume of NaOH on the other. So at the beginning, when I had zero volume of NaOH, my pH was 1. So I'm going to start with a pH of somewhere around, let's call this 1. Then as my volume went up, my pH went up slightly, 1.18. Let's see if I can make this prettier. 1.18, 1.37, and then all of a sudden it jumped from 1.37 to 7, and then with just 10 more milliliters it jumped up again to 12, and if we'd kept going it would have kind of leveled off. So, at about 50 milliliters, at my equivalence point, my pH was 7, and at 60 milliliters, not even very far away, it went to 12. So my equivalence point, the center of my graph, was at a pH of 7, and after that the pH jumped up really high and then stayed at that much higher number. So this is what the graph is going to look like for a strong acid with a strong base, and that's it for titration strong strong. Join me next time. We're going to titrate a weak acid with a strong base and see how the math changes. See you then!